So what you're looking at right now is an example of this y equals mx plus b business. You can actually see it right up there. mx plus b. If you squint, sorry it's small, I can't control the font size. Now, when you have a look at this, it gives you a straight line. That's what this whole topic is about, right? Linear relationships. So there's the straight line for this particular mx plus b. And you, in fact, can see what m and b are. Um, here's m, it's equal to 1. Here's b, it's equal to 0. Now, do you remember, like I hope you wrote down a little bit of, um, in the way of notes, what, what are m and b? What do they refer to? Those numbers? Lines of the gradient. Okay, very good. So um, this m here is gradient. They didn't use g because... Um, was taken for gravity. And then you've got B down here, which is the y-intercept. Okay, very good. Um, or another way of saying that is the intercept on the vertical axis, because we know it's not always called y, like it can be other things. Okay. Now I want you to see, and you kind of um, did a whole bunch of exercises on these, like on paper. I want you to see what happens as we muck about with these numbers. Okay. For instance, uh, and you can also see the table of values over there at the top left, so you can see what the numbers are that correspond to these dots. Okay. Let's change m equals 1 into m equals 2. Let's do that. Okay, so if I move that over. Whoop, too far. There we go. Okay, have a look. Compare that to the graph you had one second ago, which looked just a little bit different. Like that. What was the difference? How would you describe what has visually changed when I went from m equals 1 to m equals 2? How would you describe it? Okay, yeah, very good. The slope has sort of gone up. Maddie, were you going to use the same different words? I was going to say the slope has gotten steeper. Yeah, very good. It's, um, it's clearly like if you were thinking about in terms of a hill that you're running off across country. Mm. This is much steeper. That's what this m equals 2 indicates. Now, here's why I put the screen up. You can see what this means, the gradient. You know how, like, how do you calculate gradient? We have a formula for this, right? Do you remember? Rise over run. Rise over run, right? So I want to think about, okay, for instance, here is, here's a section where there's a rise of um, 0 to 4 units. Do, do you see that? Okay. And the run that corresponds to that is 2, zero, 0 to 2. So 4 divided by 2, that's what gives you the gradient of 2. And you can look at this over any interval. I can draw a big one. Let's go up to, say, here. Uh, if I do this line here, have a look at the scale on the vertical axis. What's the rise in this case? How far has it gone? It's gone 8, right? Um, from 4 up to 12. So I'll put an 8 there. What is the run? It's 4. It's gone from 2 to 6. And you can see, because it's a straight line, the gradient doesn't change, right? 8 divided by 4, it's still 2. It's 2 everywhere on this line. Is, okay? it, is it better to be specific point by where the 6 um Right there in the middle. Yeah. Yep. Do do okay, so we are going to get to this, well, I'll see if we get to this lesson or on Monday. Obviously, there are better points to pick and harder points to pick, right? Uh, we're lucky on this particular graph. We've got like a million grid lines everywhere. But if I zoom down a little bit, which I'm not going to do because of the mock-up the lines I've drawn, um, the, some of the grid lines will disappear. And when you have a look at the book, some of it is very hard to tell. Like it's halfway between, a third between, and it's very difficult to read. Um, so yes, you would pick the most clear points that you could. Now, let me rub that off. You can see that this idea of gradient, it also matches to our table of values, right? The gradient of 2, it means that, unfortunately, this is oriented vertically instead of horizontally. But here's your x values, and here are your y values. And do you see what 2 has to do with these numbers? Do you see? Each time from 0 to 2, from 2 to 4, from 4 to 6, what's happening? Yeah, you're just adding this number, right? And of course, if I change the gradient again, let's change it to something ridiculous that will be hard to read. Okay, let's go to 7. Okay. What's the connection between the gradient and the table of values? You're just adding 7 every time. In fact, if I really want to, I could even say, well, what if it's not growing? What if it was something that was dropping, right? So you can see, I mean, <laughs> my graph is, is down here now. Let me, let me make it visible. There you go, okay. You can see the gradient is negative, which is why it's dropping like a rock. The rise is negative, okay. And you can say, see the same thing that's happening with the numbers, yeah? Negative 5, negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. That's the difference, okay. So what that gradient represents is how are things changing over time, right? How's your altitude changing over time? Or how's the amount of money that you've made over time changing, okay? We've got that now ahead. I'll just put that back to... A sensible value now. Now what happens when we muck about with B on the graph? How would you describe it? 
Like when we change the y-intercept, if I made it say three, what difference would it make to the graph? It's going to move up, isn't it? It's going to have no effect on the steepness because that has everything to do with this. If I change b to something like three, you can see it's actually physically gone up, right? So this is kind of like, look, the, the differences are still all the same. They're still plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. But your starting point is now different. Does that make sense? Like your intercept with the y-axis, the vertical axis. 